It was the day on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Day on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. It was the day on Jesus.
pray. Hallelujah, it's our highest praise. Hallelujah, it's our highest praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you really love him? Come on, if you love him, put your hands together. Come on, give him a wave off him if you love him. Come on, give him a wave off him if you love him. Come on, let's worship him. Oh, 
on, give us a pray. Come on, give us a pray.
Hallelujah. The Lord knows. And the good thing you know also. Hallelujah. The Lord is searching us every day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give a choir a hand this morning. God bless them today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a great God we serve. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He woke us up this morning. Started us on our way. See a brand new day. Hallelujah. Nobody rolled us in here. We came in here on our own. Enough to praise God right there. Hallelujah. That's enough to praise God right there. There's enough to praise God right there. Hallelujah. That's enough to praise God right there. The word of God said, let everything that has rest praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just clap your hands and give God some praise. Come on, praise Him. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the
being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Y'all, clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah. I praise God today. Hallelujah. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. God, we thank you today. We praise your name. You are worthy to be praised. God, we came here to praise and worship you. God, we didn't come to just spectate. We come to participate. Hallelujah. Because, God, you've been so good. You done showed up and you done showed out in our life. And, God, we can't help but to praise you. Hallelujah. You've been so good to us, God. We got our health and strength, Lord. You've been good to us. You protected us. You kept us on the highways. Lord, we thank you. Kept us in our right mind. God, we thank you today. Thank you for all you have done for us, God. Now, God, as we proclaim your word today in this epistle, we just praise you because your word is true, Lord. Your word is light, Lord. Your word encourage our heart today. Thank you for the word today. Lord, we don't want this word to come back void. So, God, we want to meditate on your word. We want to absorb your word in our heart, Lord. We want to take your word and be more than just hearers of your word. But, Lord, we want to do what your word tells us to do. God, we thank you because this word is for me. This is a me word. Hallelujah. I'm not going to look at my neighbor. I'm going to look at me. Hallelujah. I'm not going to look on the other side of the church. Lord, I'm going to look at me. Hallelujah, because your word, Lord, it cuts both right and left. And God, we thank you for your word, that it'll make us a better people, Lord, that we can serve you better, Lord. We can serve our sisters and brothers better. God, save the living, set free in the name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to glorify your name and praise you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Our thought for the day is be kind to each other. Be kind to each other. Amen. Praise God on today. Be kind to each other. In today's society, we, are, we see more fighting and more disagreements than ever before. Hallelujah. Instead of seeing the good in someone, people would rather point out the bad and the dismeaningful things that are just not nice. Hallelujah. But oh, praise God today that his word is telling us to be kind to each other. Amen. Hallelujah. I praise God that at the end of the day, we have to be kind if we want to see Jesus. I've never seen any mean folks go to heaven. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18 and 21. Write that down. Proverbs 18, 21. It said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So death and life is in the power of your tongue. 
Sometimes people say all kinds of things with their mouth. I heard a man say, a mouth that eat bread will say anything. Hallelujah. But I praise God when the people of God get focused and they begin to do the things that's pleasing in God's sight, they'll understand what's most important. If you can't say anything nice, don't say nothing at all. That means some of y'all would have to keep your mouth shut. Some of y'all would never say nothing. Hallelujah. You, we, we wouldn't hear a mumbling word out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Some of y'all wouldn't have nothing to say. Hallelujah. And I praise God that God, everything that God makes is good. Your mouth is supposed to be good. So you can't let nothing bad come out of your mouth. It's just like night and day. People at work, they one way and they get to the church, they're another way. Or they one way in front of the pastor and behind the pastor back, they some another kind of way. Oh, hallelujah. I, I hear about uh, what pastors sometimes say. I hear pastors talk about they went on vacation for two weeks. They should have just went two days, they said. Because when they came back, some folks just tore up all kinds of stuff. Hallelujah. When a cat's away, the rice mat, the mice and the rats are play. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God today. But the Word of God is telling us to be kind. If we were kind to one another, we wouldn't have wars and rumors of wars. Russia have invaded another country, and the U.S. is upset, so President Obama and uh, Putin, they have had a conversation, 90-minute conversation. And President Obama was telling Putin, y'all need to go back to Russia where you belong. Hallelujah. But it wouldn't have to be wars and rumors of wars if everybody was just nice to one another. I mean, they just tearing up things. People are dying because of one thing or another, and people just can't be nice. Hallelujah. Look at verse 29. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. So first let me give you the definition of corrupt, foul, rotten, spoil. When last time you drank a glass of spoiled milk? Now, you spit it out, I'm pretty sure. Have you ever smelled an egg? It was rotten and you went on fried it anyway. If the egg was rotten, you're not going to eat the egg. Hallelujah. If something smelled rotten or something smelled bad, you want to get rid of it. You don't want to have nothing to do with it. Hallelujah. So the same thing here. It said, let no corrupt communication, don't let no foul, rotten, or spoil stuff come out of your mouth because you're a saintly person. Amen. Hallelujah. Should never be anything where you want to hurt somebody's feelings. But it said, but that which is good to the use of edifying. So some people think they have to have a last word. Hallelujah. You know how some of y'all are, you talking and when you, you and your spouse having a little discussion. Some of y'all want to have the last word. Oh, I'm going oh, to have the last word. You might go to sleep. I'm going to be talking while you sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. But there are even Christians who they won't cuss you out. But when they get through eating you up with their mouth, you wish, I wish you would have just cussed me out. Hallelujah. There are Christians who will never cuss you out, but when they get through talking about you and telling all this crazy stuff, hallelujah. When you have done your best and then someone come and just cut you down, like with a chainsaw. Some of y'all got chainsaw mouth. Hallelujah. People do good and you just get your chainsaw. Ah, you just eating them up. If I done done my best, y'all, this is the best I can preach. If you don't like the best I can preach, Lord have mercy. This is the best I can do. I can't do no better. 
Y'all just, when I can't do what you want me, say, Lord, help him. <laughs> just say, Lord, help him. Hallelujah. Don't talk about me. Just say, Lord, help him. I might not get the note that y'all want me to see. Lord, help him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then something might stir up in me. I might get that note. Hallelujah. But I praise God. But there are some people who cut you down when you have just tried to do your best. Sometimes these people are, are teachers. Sometimes students cut one another down. Parents cut children down. Spouses cut one another down. Friends cut one another down. Supervisors cut employees down. Employees cut supervisors down. Kinfolk cut each other down. Oh, I know I'm in the house today. Yeah. Hallelujah. People just talk and stuff. They don't have no business talking. And God's word is telling them, be kind to everybody. So it says, but that which is good for the use of edifying. What is edifying? Instructive, encouraging, uplifting. Hallelujah. Some of y'all, if I needed an encouragement word, I wouldn't ask you. Hallelujah. Because you'd have nothing good to say. Hallelujah. I'd rather hear nothing than hear what some people got to say. And then some people, they'll never encourage you. You can do your best. They'll never just give you a pat on the back. Hallelujah. There are some people that, in, <laughs> since I've been here at this church, have never said, Pastor Henry, the word of God really did bless me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I told y'all, I brought my own amens with me. Amen. I brought my encouragement with me already. I got my encouragement in my pocket right now. I got my own encouragement. So if nobody edify you, edify yourself. Start speaking in tongues. Edify yourself. Hallelujah. And then it goes on to say that it may minister grace unto the hearer. So when we talk, it should minister grace. So what is grace? Favor and kindness given, but you didn't earn it. Hallelujah. Just encouraging you. Hallelujah. And then the last thing I want to say here, Christians are saved by grace and kept by grace. Christians should live by grace and speak with grace. That's what we as Christians are supposed to do. Hallelujah. So we're saved by grace. We're kept by grace. Christians should live by grace and speak with grace. Jesus Christ gave us an example. Go to Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke, the fourth chapter, verse 18 and 22, Jesus is the example of grace. It says, starting with verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now everything that Jesus is doing here is to help somebody. Now if a person was blind and he knew about it, he didn't just let them stay blind. He gave them sight. The verse 19 said, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So encouraging them about God. And he closed the book. He gave it again to the ministers and sat down. And the eyes of, of them that were in the synagogue was fastened on him. When you say something that is encouraging, don't somebody just, don't they just look at you and say, wow, that was encouraging. And people eyes fastened on you. But look at verse 22. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this, is not this Joseph's son? The carpenter's son. Now, I don't know what kind of life Joseph lived. But one thing that it said here is that they wanted at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Would anybody say, talk about the gracious word that proceeded out of your mouth? Hallelujah. Look at verse 30. It said, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed with the day of redemption. Grieve not. 
the Holy Spirit of God. Ooh, glory to God. So when we don't do what the Word of God tells us to do, we grieve the Holy Spirit. When we don't get along, we grieve the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is grieved when Christians refuse to walk in the light. Because Jesus is the light. So we're supposed to walk in the light. When we refuse to get along with other Christians and other churches and just people in general, it grieves the Holy Spirit. When we become a Christian at daytime and at night, we are book about, it grieves the Holy Spirit. When we go to church on Sunday and Saturday night we were at Superport, it grieves the Holy Spirit. When we come on Sunday and we drink the juice that represent his body and Saturday night we had vodka, it grieves. Oh, glory to God. Have I, have I knocking on somebody's door today? It grieves the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It grieves the Holy Spirit when we're not in line with God's Word. It grieves the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. As a parent, I grieve when my children don't get along. Fussing about this. Well, she looking at me. Well, he came in my room. It grieves parents when... The children don't get along. So what do you think about God and how he feels when we don't get along? It grieves the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. It grieves the Holy Spirit when God is telling us to walk in the light and we want to walk in the darkness. It grieves the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So when co-workers and classmates can't get along, there's Grieving that happens. So this means everyone knows what grieving feels like. It don't feel good. When we bury a loved one, we're grieving. That same grieving is the grieving that the Holy Spirit grieving because things are not going the way it should be going. Look at what it says to the end here. It says, whereby... Ye are sealed until the day of redemption. So if you're part of the Holy Spirit, as a Christian, we are sealed until the day of redemption until Jesus Christ comes back. This means we belong to God and that we're going to receive his promises. And one of the promises we get if we love the Lord and we're saved, we get eternal life. That's a promise we get. We've been sealed with that promise. I praise God that I've been sealed with some promises, you all. You all, we've been sealed with some promises. Hallelujah. Look at verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Hallelujah. Let me just stay here for a while because this is the part. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. This is the part where people mess themselves up. I'll give you this story of an old lady about 70 years old that well respected in the church. Instead of putting out a fire, she put more coals on the fire. You know how people just want to start up a little something, see how big the fire can get? Hallelujah. So she told a young woman, see, old women, oh, hallelujah. All women should be virtuous women, not messy women. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So she told her, she said, you know what, 
that woman over there, she sure been talking about you. And why would an old, foolish woman, because she's foolish, why would she want to even say something like that? And the young woman don't got no good sense anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ain't saved from nothing. <laughs> and so she take all this foolishness in her mind, and she go and confront the woman. I hear that you've been talking about my mama. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm talking about craziness. People just crazy. They say crazy, some of the craziest stuff. And you know, that's all you got to do is talk about somebody's mama. And some of y'all get unsaved. You know somebody talk about your mama. And you already know what they're saying ain't true. And you're going to sit up there and believe what the devil's telling you? You know what? We're as crazy as we can be. We want to believe what somebody tells us. Now, you know that your mama is a good mama, and she says she's a bad mama. And you know your mama brought you up, and you're going to let somebody say something bad about your mama. You're going to sit there and listen. Hallelujah. What you just said, told, what the lady should have told the old foolish woman. Can we pray? Y'all, when anybody act crazy, just ask, can we pray? You will lose your crowd when you say, can we pray? People don't want to talk about that when you say, can we pray? Well, can we hold hands? Can we pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And by that time, they'll let your hand go and leave you alone. But you got to learn how to pray. Hallelujah. But many times we don't want to pray. We want to start conviction and all this crazy stuff. Peace. Peace. You say about peace be still. You need to peace be still. Hallelujah. But the first one talks about bitterness. Who? It's, it's a resentment that have been so deep resentment people you know people resent you because you live holy you know people resent you just because it's you sometimes people don't have no reason they have no reason to resent you then I look at wrath rage some of y'all, you already on edge already, and somebody doing, then you get into a rage. Hallelujah. You didn't take your medicine, you get into a rage. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I look at anger, a deep hostility. Many people are going to anger management today because they get so angry. But when they get to the boss man, yes, sir, yes, sir. Why is it people get angry when it comes to things for God, when it comes to things for the body of Christ, and then when they get to work, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. What is it about us as people? Clamor, strife. Out of control. That's people making a lot of noise. Noise, they, they're talking a lot, talking a lot of trash. trash. I call them trash talkers. Hallelujah. Evil speaking. Slander. Slander somebody's name. You know what? It's amazing how rumors get started. And that's why so many people, they take folks to court because of slander. You done slandered my name. You done said something about me you are not supposed to say about me. It's funny how people say things they have no clue. Somebody said at work one day, I heard. When people say, I heard, 
I turn around and I go the other way. I don't want to hear what you done heard. Hallelujah. I heard that they're going to lay off. Well, that's for you. That ain't for me. You need to tell you need to put people in that place. That's for you. That's not for me. Hallelujah. People start, start their own rumor. And, I, and what gets me so upset when people say, I'm going to start this rumor. We're going to see how fast it can go. <laughs> They're saying stuff they have no business saying. And then malice, evil or a vicious intention to hurt. Malice. Vicious. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get you back. I'm going to get you when you ain't looking. Hallelujah. You know how some of y'all used to fight? You know how some of y'all used to fight? Y'all used to do all kind of crazy stuff? And thank God, God came in and saved you. Hallelujah. But when it's evil and vicious, hallelujah, you want to just get somebody back. Look at verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. I know some of y'all are like, oh, I can forgive, but I ain't going to forget. Every time I see you, I'm going to be thinking about what you did to me. You know, people just, their minds are so messed up. The Word of God says, if God can forgive you, can't you forgive somebody else? Hallelujah. Paul is telling us to be kind and compassionate to one another. He went here to the Ephesians and he was telling them, you've got to be kind to one another. People might not think the way you think, but you still need to be kind to them. They might not live in the same neighborhood you live in. They might not dress the way you dress, but you still need to be kind to them. Hallelujah. Tender-hearted, compassionate. When people do something wrong to us, forgive them. I know they did it on purpose. Forgive them anyway. Hallelujah. People are still mad about stuff way back in high school. They're 50 years old now. They're still mad. Still mad about stuff that happened when they was in elementary school. They're still holding on to that thing. I mean, just holding on to it. I, yeah, you, you stole my boyfriend. We was in the fifth grade, but I remember what you did. Fifth grade. Hallelujah. Fifth grade. Still holding on to it. Those folks gone on about their life, and she didn't even marry that old knucklehead. <laughs> she done went on with her life with somebody. And people are holding on to the wrong stuff. Nobody want to truly hold on to God's unchanging hand. They want to hold on to stuff that have no value. Hallelujah. All that stuff it don't mean nothing. If God forgave you of all your crazy stuff now, look, don't go back too far, but just think about some of the crazy stuff you used to do. Hallelujah. Think about some of the stuff that you did and God forgave you. Hallelujah. Just think about some of the stuff. You don't have to go back too far. Go last week. Think about some of the stuff you did. Hallelujah. Some of the things you thought about you know was wrong. Some of the things you said about people you know was wrong. Just think about some of those things. God is telling us to be kind to everybody. And not only be kind, be tenderhearted and forgive people when they wrong you. Hallelujah. It says, even as God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven you. Hallelujah. You need to forgive the people who did you wrong or the people that set you up to fail. You know, sometimes on jobs, people set you up to fail. They set you up. They already know nothing good going to come out of this project. And they tell you, won't you sign up for that project? Man, yeah, that's a good project. They didn't sign up, but they want you to sign up. That's why you got to take the Holy Ghost with you when you go on the job, too. You got to take the Holy Ghost with you everywhere you go. 
Hallelujah. Because if you don't take the Holy Ghost with you, you're going to set up to fail. And that's what the devil wants. The devil wants you to fail. The devil, you know what, if you get prosperous, do you know that's a slap in the devil's face? The devil want to keep us in the weeds, the weeds of just talking about each other. And that's why people can never get to another level. That's why churches can never get to another level. Can't get to another level because everybody's still in the weeds. Everybody's saying, come on, let's get saved, get saved. Been talking about get saved for 10 years, and the people just come to church and still unsaved. And never can get to that next level. The body of Christ can't get to the next level because people, they're fighting about the wrong stuff. Churches are splitting every day. Pastors are quitting being pastors because their heart got so discouraged because people didn't want to go to the next level. Hallelujah. I praise God that you all have a mindset of getting to the next level. Because if you didn't want to get to the next level, some of y'all would still be at the old Greater Mount Zion Church right now. But look like all y'all came over here with us. Praise God. You want to get to the next level. Anybody want to stay poor all their life? You know when the Word of God says the poor will be with you, be with you always, you just say that ain't for me. That scripture might be for somebody on the other side of the river, but on this side of the river, not for me. Because God, I want to treat people right, and I know if I treat people right, there's a blessing and a promise because I did what was right. And I know it's hard sometimes to do what's right. I know it's hard sometimes when people are talking about you all the time. I know it's hard. But God said, do right anyway. Go ahead and do right because I got a blessing for you. And that blessing is going to knock those folks' socks off. Y'all know people still wonder about me why I'm so blessed right now. They don't know that I don't mind praising my God. Even when I'm going through the valley or the shadow of death, I still know how to praise Him. Even when people talk about you and you feel like you're at the last part of your life, you still just get on back up. See, some of y'all don't know how to, when the devil done tried to knock you out, and even if he did knock you out, you got to get up and get back in the race. Don't let people try to put you down. All this crazy stuff that people are trying to do in this world, and this world is trying to tell us what to do, but the world can't tell me nothing. So you go ahead and be kind to folks. When people say, when they do you dirt, you do them dirt also. They kill your cat, you kill that dog. You got to let the folks know, I am at a higher level. My mindset is higher. My folks are higher. I will not stoop down to what the enemy is trying to get me to do. Because if I stay down in this dirt, I'm going to be dirty. That's why people got so much dirt on them right now. Because they done laid in the dirt, they done walled in the dirt so long, they don't know how to get up. But I'm telling you, they get up. Hallelujah. Get up out of that dirt. Don't let nobody push you up to do something crazy. I just hear chatter all the time. People chattering about stuff. And most of the time it's chatter about crazy stuff that has no value. Zero bad value. Alt from alt leave alt. That's zero times zero equals zero. And that's why so many people are still at zero and they wonder why they can't get to another level. They wonder why, God, why do I keep going through the same thing over and over and over? You got to elevate your mind. You got to get it in your heart that, God, I want to please you with everything I do. I know everybody else is... Drinking wine coolers. But I declare and I decree, I ain't going to drink no wine cooler. You can't do what the world do. You're not part of this world. You're just going through this thing. But we got a high place that we're trying to get to. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, like I hit something right there. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So at the end of the day, I don't mind. Hearing from God. When the Word of God tells us, if they hit you on one cheek, turn another one. Let them hit you, hit you right there. 
But some of y'all, by the time they got to hit you, you better you start fighting already. And you can't get to another level. Another level is where I'm trying to get to, y'all. Y'all got to get out the weeds, get out the weeds, get out the weeds. Because God got something better for you. Got to elevate your mind, elevate your thoughts. Your thoughts got to be higher. Hallelujah. Let me just tell you this, and I'm going to be through. At the end of the day, if you can elevate your mind, you can't do it unless it's been renewed your mind got to be renewed. You can't be thinking about the same old trash you used to be thinking about. You can't be thinking about what everybody else done, done to you. Hallelujah. How they weren't kind to you. And when you gave your best and then they gave you a bunch of mess, you can't think about that stuff. You got to learn to praise God. No matter what's going on around you, you got to muster up you a praise. Even when you're going through something, you got to say, God, I'm going to still praise you. God, I'm going to still bless you because you bless my soul. God, you done took me to another level, a level I never thought I would have been. But God, because I just stayed in this race, I didn't give up. I put my hand to the gospel plow, and I didn't turn around. I pressed forward towards the mark of the high calling of God. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. I'm going to keep on doing what God tell me to do. And as I do it, I'm going to give me a praise and, hey, glory to God. And somebody ain't going to understand my praise, but that's your problem, not my problem. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. That's my praise. If I want to skip with my praise, just leave me alone. <laughs> glory to God. If I want to wave my hand, hallelujah, just leave me alone. Hallelujah. But when I think about how good my God has been to me, after all I done been through, I know how to praise Him. I know how to shout. I got the victory. <laughs> Glory to God. God oh, you keep blessing me. Didn't do nothing but praise you. You kept blessing me. Y'all, let me tell you something. If you learn how to praise God, I'm talking about unusual praise to God. You watch God do some unusual stuff in your life. I told you in 100 days, you're going to receive a miracle. Your family member going to receive a miracle. Or somebody close to you going to receive a miracle. I'm not going to wait until the battle is over with. I'm going to shout. I'm going to shout. I'm going to shout. Right now. Hallelujah. We've been mad and do it for the night. But my joy is coming right now. Now we to get some joy. Hallelujah. Unspeakable joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. When I think about God and all he has done for me, hallelujah. All this love and kindness, it makes me want to be kind to everybody. Hallelujah. See, all sometimes we use our titles, and our titles get us in trouble. Hallelujah. Well, I'm the supervisor. Hallelujah. People want to be the supervisor and can't supervise a can of soup into a piece of pot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. I praise God today. Won't you clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you? Hallelujah. Glory. Praise God today. I praise him because he's the true and living God. Without him, we are nothing. Hallelujah. As all the workers are coming, praise God, as all the workers are coming, I praise God today. I bless his name.
You can be saved today if you're not saved. If you want the Lord Jesus to be your personal Savior. The only way you can be kind to people is that you're really going to have to have God in your heart. Amen. I know people say all kinds of things and people sometimes want to set you up to fail. Hallelujah. But I want you to elevate your mind. Take the high road. Get out of the weeds. And watch God bless you real good. And the same people that talked about you and said all kind of crazy things about you, those people are going to be looking at you and say, now how did he or she get from that level to that level? Anybody want to go to another level? <laughs> the first level is getting to a place where you're saved and God will touch your heart in a special way and take you to another level. Then I encourage you to take your praise to another level. I know you might just sit there and And every now and then you pat your feet. You clap your hands and you nod to good music or to the word. But I declare and I decree today that if you elevate your praise, hallelujah, God's going to do something supernatural for you. He's going to take you to another level that's going to blow your mind. And all your enemies and the canker worms. <laughs> Glory to God. That thought you weren't going to be nothing. They have to change their thought. Because God came in like a flood and just blessed your heart real good. Hallelujah. I've seen people start off with nothing. Hallelujah. And I see God just elevate them because they got the spirit man right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've seen God take women when people have talked about them and, and before they were saved, they did a lot of crazy stuff. But all of a sudden, God came in. <laughs> Glory to God. When they said, she ain't going to be nothing and nobody ain't going to want you. And God just bless you real good. I dare you to elevate your thought in what God has done for you. Because when you think about what you've already done, just think about what he's going to get ready to do. Hallelujah. After all the stuff you've been through, you could have lost your mind. But God came in and God just blessed you real good because you knew how to hold on to his hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of the jobs that you all have, you didn't even qualify, but but God. Hallelujah, but God. God made a way when man thought he was going to close the door. God opened the door and you walked on in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, glory to your holy name. Oh, how great you are, God. Oh, hallelujah. How you went to the doctor and the doctor gave you one report, but but God. Oh, hallelujah. I dare you to praise God like never before. I dare you to take your praise to another level. Hallelujah. You want God to move supernaturally on your behalf, and you just going to just look at God, not say nothing to him. Won't even wave your hand. Come on now. <laughs> Glory to God. God want to take you to another level. God want to do that today. Hallelujah. All heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yes, child. 
suffer and believe But he knew that the blood that his son spilled there Would save this world from her Put his power into the flow and the sins of the world could not pollute it. The years and time could not dilute it. Jesus. Blood 